starting with this image just here, I'd like to show you how we can create this look just here, this mirror image look. Now, just a bit of a teaser of what we're going to be building. You can see here inside of my layers panel, I have a couple of smart objects going on just here. Now, if you're already thinking this is dramatic overkill, uh, hang in there because you'll find that, yes, this is a little complex, but it's an incredibly powerful way and an incredibly flexible way to build this look. So let's close this file up and build this thing from scratch. So I've got a JPEG file just here. You can see in my layers panel, it's a single background layer. Let's click the padlock icon to unlock that layer. And let's right mouse click on this layer and choose convert to smart object. We're not going to take a deep dive into smart objects. I've got a whole nother video you can check out if you're interested in that. Please appreciate converting a layer to a smart object takes the pixels from that layer and puts them inside of a smart object, which is basically just a Photoshop file embedded inside of this Photoshop file. Now, the beauty with doing that is you can resize that smart object, throw filters at it, and you can't harm those original pixels. It might make a little more sense why I'm doing this in just a few moments. So we've created our smart object. Let's give this a good name. So I'm going to double click on the layer name to rename it, and let's call it left. So now we should double our canvas width to make room for a right version of this. So let's do that just now. So let's go up to image, canvas size, where it says width just here, let's change it from pixels to percent and change the width to 200. Now guys, you can mess around with the anchor points just here if you understand what's going on just there. For the rest of us, we can just happily skip over it. I'll just choose okay. So we've happily doubled our canvas width and let's grab our move tool and we've got the left layer just here. Let's scoot this over like so. Yeah, do you see all those um, pink lines popping up? Up under view, show smart guides. That's what they are. They're on by default and they are fantastic for helping you move things around and having them snap to things like edges. So if yours aren't on and you want them on, that's where you can activate them from. Okay, fantastic. We've got our left smart object nicely aligned to the left. So let's make a duplicate of this and obviously pop it on the right. So our left layer is selected. Press Command or Control J. Now, it looks like we've created a second smart object. And yes, we have. But the important thing to keep in mind here is these guys both point to the same smart object. So yes, we've got two instances here. But if we go into either one of those and edit that content, the other one will also update as well. Incredibly powerful. And you'll see that in action in just a few moments. Okay, so we've duplicated this. Let's rename this. I'll call it right. And then again, I've got my move tool selected. I've got my right layer selected. Let's move that over like so. So obviously we need to now flip this thing horizontally. So the right layer selected. Up under the edit menu, transform, flip horizontal. And check it out. We've achieved the look we're going for. Now, if you're incredibly lucky, you may have your perfect image just now. But for most of us, in most situations, we're going to need to start messing around with this middle area just here to create the perfect look that we're going for. Okay, so this is looking great. And uh, let's, start, uh, let's start to edit that middle area just now. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, scoot this over just to give myself some room. You'll see why in just a second. So it's time to go and edit the contents of the smart object, guys. So I've got my left layer just here. Now, in a moment, I'm going to double click on the thumbnail just here. And when I do that, it will open up the smart object, allowing us to make edits to the contents of that smart object. So notice I only have a single file open just now. I'm going to double click the thumbnail for the smart object just now. A second file has opened up and we are now seeing the contents of our smart object. Notice the layers panel has also updated, showing us just that single layer just there. I'm actually going to grab the tab for that and just pull it away like so. And I might even zoom out a little bit just here and resize this window. So just uh, go over that again. Here's my composition just here. Here is the contents of our smart object just here. And you can see the layers for that smart object just over here inside of the layers panel. 
Okay, so this is where the real fun stuff starts, guys. Well done hanging in there. So now, I've got my move tool selected. I'm here inside of my smart object. Let's scoot this over just a little bit. Now, nothing changed in our main composition. So here inside of my smart object, yes, I can make changes, but we're not going to see that reflected in the main composition until we save our smart object. So we're going to come up to File, Save, or you can use the keyboard shortcut. Now also keep in mind here guys, we aren't saving this to disk somewhere. We're not saving some extra file somewhere else. Remember, a smart object is just a Photoshop file inside of another Photoshop file. So when we choose Save, we're just saving this smart object back to the main composition just here. So let's do this just now. Choose Save. And did you see the update just there? Fantastic. Let's do that again. So I'm going to scoot this over just a little bit more. And this time I'll use the keyboard shortcut, Command or Control S. And the second I do that, you can see the main comp update just here. So I'm going to close up the smart object just here. And resize this just a little here. So really, we're almost there. We just need to now trim this up a little bit. Now, of course, we could break out the crop tool, but there's a nicer, quicker way to do this. You go up to Image, Trim, and choose Transparent Pixels. Choose OK. Check it out. We are pretty much done there, guys. But I'm actually going to repeat this process one more time and just show you how to get around something that might trip you up slightly. So let's repeat that again. I'm just going to scoot this over. My thumbnail just here for my smart object. Double click to open that up. I'm going to pull this away and zoom out a little bit just here. Now what I'm going to do this time, instead of moving it to the right, I'm going to start to bring it back to the left a little bit and save this. Now this is looking great, but you'll notice that her hair and her nose are now starting to get close to the edge. Now let me close up the smart object just here. So what's happened here is making this second adjustment, we've actually now pushed some of those pixels within our smart object off of our main canvas just here. So there's a nice easy way to get that back as well. We go up to image, as opposed to choosing trim, which we did before, let's choose reveal all. And the second we do, those pixels that were hidden, we can now see. So I might leave it at that point there, guys. If you made it this far, congratulations. That was a lot of new content potentially just there. I hope you've learned yourself a very nice technique just now for how to create these mirrored looks here inside of Photoshop. Catch you later.